Hi, and we're going to be starting Unit 2, Section 4.2 today. So when we look into Section 4.2, it has to do with how we define relations. And it's also going to start to lead us into functions, which are special kinds of relations. So before we begin, let me put some, uh, some names on the board, and we're going to talk about what relations by themselves mean as an idea. I'm going to put, so let's see, so we're going to talk about Mary... We're going to talk about Gina. Um, we're going to talk about um, Christy. And let's get on one more name up here. Let's let's add in a Zelda. Why not, right? Then let's put some more names up here. So let's let's put up a um, a Connor. And then maybe we'll put up a Zephron. And then we're going to put up a hmm, Zephron. And then we'll put up, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then let's put up a uh, Mark. And let's, whoops, wrong pen. And then we'll put in maybe a mat. There. Now, I'm going to tell you there's a rule that connects these two groups. And so to do that, let's get some arrows out here and we'll connect them. We're going to say that we're going to pair uh, Mary to Mark. And we're going to pair Mary to Matt. And we're going to pair Christy to Connor. And we're going to pair Zelda to Zephron. And in this case, Gina is not going to be paired with anybody. So there would be our, there's our relation. Now, when we talk about relations, we're talking about what's happening as I draw those arrows. What rule am I following? Now, what's nice about this example to open with, the rule of isn't that hard to figure out. In this case, we might argue that the relation is that we're going to pair girl names in blue with boy names in black based on the first letter of the name. So Mary gets paired with Mark and with Matt. Christy gets paired with Connor. And Zelda gets paired with Zephron. So we're drawing from one group into the other, and we're using the first letter of the name in order to create the rule as to how we're going to pair these people up. Now, when we start to get more and more into how we define our terms, this group over here from which we are drawing names we call the domain. These are the names that we draw from. Over here, the things that we pair them with, we refer to as the range. So when we talk about a relation, we're talking about a rule that takes an item from the domain and pairs it with one or more items in the range. Now there's lots of different ways we can do these pairings. For example, you can see Mary is paired with two boys' names, Mark and Matt, whereas Gina is not paired with anything. So our relation isn't very well defined if we aren't using everything in our domain. In the next section, we'll talk about why this is not a function. It has to do with this particular example. This is also an illustration of one of the ways that we can illustrate and demonstrate a particular relation. We call this a map, where we're taking ideas from one and we're using an arrow to literally express how they're paired together. Now, there are other ways we can show this data. Another one that we might use is called a t-table. So if I were to do the same thing again, let me grab this collection of names. Oops, don't want all those, so let's grab my collection of names. Copy, paste. Let's bring them over here. So Gina, Zephyrin, Connor, Mark, and Matt, Mary, hey, Mary, uh, Christy, Zelda. There we go. And that's everybody. I'm going to get rid of my extra arrows. They don't confuse anybody. There we go. 
Now over here, I want to go ahead and draw some lines. And I now have a table. Now this table isn't really quite exactly what we want to be looking at. I have my inputs, we're going to call those my x's. My outputs, I'm going to call those my y's. And you can see that if I do a little bit of organization, I'm going to put that there, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to take Mary, and we are going to whoop, paste her in twice there. There. And you can see that Gina has no pairing. So now what I've done is I've organized my chart. If I go across the chart, I've got Christy and Connor are paired, Zelda and Zephyr are paired, Mary, Mark, Mary, Matt, Gina, nobody. So, or yeah, yeah, Gina. So what I've got going on again is another way of illustrating it. We call this the T table. Now, because I'm using names as opposed to values, I can't graph these. I can't plot them as points and use them as an ordered pair. And that'll be the third way I can show my data. So let's go ahead and, and, and get some data that we can look at that uses these kinds of pairings in order to better express what we're looking at and actually move more into the realm of numbers. But remember, as we're talking about relations, domain and range, we can use any kind of relation to represent them. Domain are my inputs, range are my outputs, and the relation is the rule that connects between them. So let's start with a, a set of data. I'm going to start by using a t-table to represent the data set we're going to look at. So there's my t-table. Let's label this x and y. So there's x, there's y. And now let's put this, the book uses the example of how many points you earn for finishing different places in a race. So let's say, let's use something like that. We'll model it a little differently. So we have where you came. You came in first, you came in second, you came in third, you came in fourth. And then let's assume that the values, the number of points you earn, maybe you earn 10 points for coming in first, six points for coming in second, uh, four points for coming in third, and we'll keep it interesting, three points for coming in fourth. So in other words, for this kind of competition, the, the gap later on is pretty insignificant, but coming in first offers a pretty sizable advantage over the other. So if you come in first twice, you've pretty much locked it all up. Someone coming in second three times isn't going to catch you. Not a bad relationship. Now, if I were to draw this as a map, what I would have to do is I would have my X's, I would have my Y's. Ooh, that's not very good. Let's try a better oval. There it goes. Let's get rid of you. Boom. Do, 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 do. Let's... Yeah, I guess I'll have to do. I guess I can. Ah, there we go. That's better. Yoink. There's that. Now I'll put our numbers in here. Now, traditionally with a map, we write our numbers in ascending order. So I would write one, oops, wrong color. Let's be consistent here. So I would write one, two, three, and four. And then over in the Y column, three, four, six, and lastly, 10. And now what I'm going to do is I'll draw arrows that represent each of these relationships. So let's use yeah, some arrows that aren't so weird. Here we go. So one gets paired with 10, two gets paired with six, three gets paired with four, and four gets paired with three. And there would be a map that shows this relationship at work. And lastly, I could do a graph of it. So what I would do with my graph so there's that, there's this. I'm going to put my x's along the horizontal axis. And I'm going to put my y's on the vertical. So x, y, there's one, two, three, four. And in the y direction, I have 10 is my high value. There's five, halfway. So if I plot my points, 
1 comma 10 is right there. Uh, 2 comma 6 would be right here. 3 comma 4 would be right here. And finally, 4 comma 3 would be right around there. So now I've shown the relationship graphically. I've plotted my points, but you can kind of make out this curve. And you can see how it's very steep for first place. That represents visually how much more important it is to come in first than it is to come in a later place. So I've got these three ways I can show my relations. Now there's still more stuff we can talk about. Let's go back to some more language. We talked about the idea of the domain. One way to express a domain is in what's called set notation, where I want to write out all the numbers in my domain in ascending order. Now I'm going to use curly brackets to set them off from each other. Pretend that's a four, so I don't have to rewrite it, please. That's really a, a four. There we go. But you can see I use that curly bracket to show that the domain is made up of a set of values, and those values include the numbers one through four. Likewise, I can talk about the range. And again, I'm going to use curly brackets to denote my range. So curly bracket, three, four, six, and ten. And I'll close it with another curly bracket. And so there's my range. And that's a third way I can talk about these. And this is what's called set notation. And that's a way of illustrating my domain and range as sets of values. So we have in the middle of the screen, we have your map, we have your T table, and then we have your graph. So one of your first tasks in 4.2 is to, given a collection of data, be able to illustrate it in one of these three formats, identify the domain, those are my inputs, and identify my range. Those are the values that come out of the relationship. Those are the things that get paired with. Let's talk about one more example of this in just a second. 